Well, it's taken a little longer than expected, but finally, Kolkata get the job done by a mere matter of 86 runs. We'll talk about all the ramifications of what that victory did, but it meant there was pretty much only one team on the park out there. 171 for four. We said it looked more like a 190 type total on a proper pitch, but nothing would have prepared us for the capitulation from the opposition. And nothing would have prepared us for the fact that spin, other than a wicket for Shakib al Hassan, played pretty much no part in it apps whatsoever. That's match number 54, Kolkata versus Rajasthan. As we wrap it all up, that and another game in this doubleheader on Creek Buzz Live in association with our fantasy partner, My 11 Circle. Joining me to wrap this up, Joy Bharacharya, Sean Pollock. And I'll go straight to the fast bowler in Sean Pollock, an all rounder, of course. Sean, if someone had told you at the start of the innings that uh, Kolkata would dismiss Rajasthan after all the build up we did for under 100, and the three spinners between them would take one wicket. You'd think something's wrong, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think they got two. I think Chakravati also got one as well. So, um, But I just I just do think on those kind of surfaces, your big quicks, if they hit back of a length, we saw in the last game that Mumbai played, it really can be difficult. And, and I really hope there's a better surface going forward. Uh, not taking anything away from how well Kolkata bowled. I thought... Lucky Ferguson was brilliant. Uh, you know, he was straight. He, he didn't offer up any width. His lengths were good. Moby was exactly the same. They targeted the stumps. They offered up no width whatsoever. And only Tavatia really showed any sort of fight or, or any ability to get them away. So, superb performance by Kolkata. Um, risking a little bit to get there as fast bowlers eight overs out of the way earlier rather than later. But it proved to be the right call. And as we said in the halftime show, it was the inexperience for me of, of Rajasthan Royals. I mean, even Jaswal in the first over, reverse sweep, getting himself out, putting the team under pressure. Livingston maybe trying to run at a person at 150 kilometers per hour wasn't maybe the strategy to do. Um, I mean, even, even not knowing who was going to come to the crease <laughs> after the second wicket fell, it, it just looked like the inexperience played against them in the end. Yeah, that's one way to summarize it, Joy. I mean, there would be delight in the Kolkata camp, but I'm sure even they wouldn't have expected. They would have known, we'll put runs on the board and let's just squeeze the opposition. I mean, this would have come by surprise. Yes, Sean mentioned back of a length. You've got to have a strategy as a quicker bowler. But I think they were just blown away by pure pace, starting with Lockie Ferguson. Lockie Ferguson was absolutely brilliant. And see, what happens is because they had so much to chase, they went hard early. And they started losing wickets. And as he said, the moment Yashasvi Jaiswal, he got out of the kind of stroke he tried on the second or third ball of the innings, they were under so much pressure. And then Sanju Samson gets out. And those two dismissals really broke their back. After that, they, you're always fighting against the clock. And I think what Kolkata did well, and the Kolkata strategy must have been exactly as Sean said, to get rid of the fast bowlers early so that when there's no pace in the ball and the ball is softer, give it to the spinners, they're going to be impossible to hit. As it turned out, they didn't even need to do that because, you know, the number of wickets they lost early. It's great. It was a disciplined performance. And I think what I liked about the fact that, you know, somebody like a Shiva Mavi, he knew exactly what to do. He was watching. He saw what made Lockie Ferguson successful. He did exactly the same things. And that, for me, is a huge, huge win. I mean, look at that. You know, four for, you know, 21 in 3.1 overs, 10 dot balls, absolutely brilliant. Length to length, this is a guy who was at one point their third choice seamer. Prasid Krishna would play ahead of him. Uh, even Kamlesh Nagarkoti was playing ahead of him in the India leg. This third choice seamer, Sandeep Boyer has played ahead of him, has become their first choice seamer. And he's just shown them, this is why I deserve to be that your number one Indian fast bowler. And he's, I think he's deserved that position now. And I can tell you, Sean, we talk a lot about matchups. Early on, we were just trying to figure out who's going to be bowling when Shakib came with the first over. And then I was thinking, okay, here comes Samson. Are they going to throw uh, more spin at him? Are they going to throw Lockie Ferguson at him? And I got a quick voice in my ear from our producer, Abhin Manu, saying, no, 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 no. Shivam Mavi versus Sanju Samson. Three dismissals in, I think, 15 deliveries. Well, 16 balls became four dismissals in 17 balls. Spot on. Yeah, for sure. And, and the matchups are something that the analysis has done about often. You know, there's when you just got like an individual that comes to the crease, um, you know, you want to put a little bit of doubt in his mind. And when he's got out a couple of times, you know, I know someone like uh, um, 
Rashid Khan has got quite a few customers he's knocked over. So as soon as they get to the crease, give them something to think about. And that proved to be brilliant. Um, I suppose the way he got out was slightly fortunate to be flicked there on the leg side, but just put something in the mind. And, and matchups are, are part and parcel of the modern T20. And it's a good idea. I mean, in our days, without having stats, facts, and figures, we just used to tear it up as countrymen versus countrymen because we knew we didn't want to get out to a fellow countryman and have to deal with the repercussions in the national dressing room a little bit later. Um, but now it's scientific and the stats and figures are, are put to the fore. But just a follow-up question on that, Sean, for you. That was the matchup dismissal. In fact, it was probably the only soft dismissal as such among all the uh, Rajasthan dismissals. But Mavi is the rest of his wickets. Lockie Ferguson heaped high praise on him. And I think Kolkata have found just the right foil going into the playoff with the two quicks, uh, whether Russell come back, comes back or not, we don't know, and the three spinners. Yeah, it has. I mean, they might even, the way the wickets played, I mean, if you took it this match and the last game, I know they've been on the same surfaces, but the seamers have actually been the ones. So they even consider maybe bringing in an extra seamer. But I did look at the surface and it looks like there's two pitches that are, are being prepared next to it. So I would expect a slightly better surface um, and then that would be more conducive to the spin. But having one so convincingly on the surface where you will play your eliminator and your qualifier if you do go through um it's almost like it's become their home ground so this is perfect preparation for them the batsmen also know that a lot of them have got to the crease they know the plans on how to score now how to get some runs on the surface and the game plans that they can implement so um yeah i think it would be advantage kolkata if Obviously, if, if Mumbai don't win by about 180 runs or whatever it may be, advantage Calcutta to ever they have to face there. Yeah, that's that's another different website you have to go to. You have to go to ridiculousscenarios.com. Uh, Sean, <laughs> Sean has not yet got a copyright on that, but we will try and come to that in a bit. But even if you look at Kolkata's approach, or rather Kolkata's path to progress, Joy, uh, first leg of the tournament, two wins, five losses, you really tell yourself we're up against it. Second leg of the tournament, just reverse the figures, simple mathematics. No, I think they did superbly. This is very much looking like the team of 2014, which was again two and five in the first leg and then came back to India and won seven, nine in a row to win the tournament. Uh, they might have lost two games, but they didn't really lose that much momentum. One of them was a close game and these things happen. I think what's great about the team is now it's looking set. And for them to be set without somebody of the likes of, you know, to not have Andre Russell in this setup and still look set is a great thing. There's still a couple of worries for them. I mean, I still feel Dinesh Karting and Owen Morgan are not right, quite right there. But their top four is giving them value. Their bowling is giving them value. So, if all you have to solve is maybe two middle order places, I think as a team, you know, nine out of your 11 places are picking themselves. I think that's a very good place to be. And the fact that this pitch suits you more than it suits any other team. I mean, bar none. No other team enjoys the surface as much as KKR does. Surface is one thing, Sean. But I think overall, again, looking at the 7-7 seven and seven performance, taking them virtually to the playoffs, we cannot mathematically put the queue next to their name yet. Uh, only for the fact that, as Sean said, Mumbai have uh, a crazy task ahead of them to try and get to 14 points and get to that with a huge, huge, huge improvement in net run rate. Kolkata is now plus 0.587. The other S word I would use, Sean, along with uh, what Joy just said, is stability. I think that's the one thing you've seen in this half of the tournament for them. Settled 11, stable 11, and despite the captain not scoring runs, they've found a way to win. Yeah, I, I think definitely the break. If, if you had to look at the teams that the break helped, I think Calcutta would be the ones who benefit the, the most, um, able just to rejig things, rethink things through. And um, and they have. And, you know, the, the key to it is that when your other more senior players aren't performing and you get the youngsters putting their hands up, then that's when you start really moving in the right direction. Because once you build their confidence up, once you've given them the ability and the belief that they can go out there and do the job, Eventually, what normally happens is your senior players do come good and then you've got a really strong unit. So, they'll be hoping at the back end here, as Joy said, maybe the two guys in the middle order haven't fired. But they'll be hoping above all hopes that um, those two guys come good and then you've got six players mm -hmm. who really are going to be able to contribute nicely. Yeah, and, and the youngsters, 
we talk about the youngsters putting their hands up. I mean, Andre Russell would love to have put his hands up. Unfortunately, his foot didn't let his put let him put his hand up. Owen Morgan not getting runs, which is where the youngsters have compensated. And the one name who was not there in the two and five joy was a gentleman called Venkatesh Iyer. He was the difference. He's been the difference. He's been the spark, and he's done everything. I mean, even in matches where others have done well, he's given them a start, or he's come and bowled a couple of crucial overs. He's got a couple of catches. He has done a lot of things for them, which I think, I mean, he's given them an overall performance, which very few people. He has to be called. I mean, all the others were there, and they were still struggling. So somewhere, you know, he was that last piece that made them competitive, and. Really, I have to say, you cannot, cannot give them any money. He has to be given the maximum credit for being what it is. Of course, along with Brendan McCullum, because I think one other thing happens. When you're a very young team and you're two and five, I mean, Brendan would have come back and said, you know what, we're done. Don't worry, go and play your game now. You know, this, this season's over. Play play your natural game. Play, take, take it one game at a time and let's see where we go from there. And I think that let's see where we go is what's made them so successful. Yeah, <clears throat> certainly a relaxed attitude, but uh, this was only the second of two games that we had on this weekday doubleheader. Uh, it seems an age ago when that first match was played, not quite as crucial in terms of points and permutations and combinations, but it was still maybe a bit of a concern momentum-wise for the Chennai side. 134 for six on what looked like a far more decent surface than where Kolkata got 171. And Punjab chased that down in 13 overs. They actually needed to chase it down even quicker if they had to have a chance. What an innings from KL Rahul. 98 of 42 deliveries. We briefly, briefly touched upon this, uh, Sean. But just to wrap things up at the end of the day, Chennai will have watched another game. They will now know where they stand mentally and otherwise. W what's their sort of thought process right now? Well, first of all, I think they should go away and appreciate the effort of KL Rahul. I think he was absolutely superb. And when you analyse the bowling department of what Chennai brings to the equation, you've got, what, five international bowlers, um, quality international bowlers. And he made them look like they were mediocre, to be totally honest. I mean, some of those shots he played were just simply exquisite. I mean, the only thing he did wrong was not get another two runs. I mean, they even did what they did right, is they got to the score one run before, and then they hit a six to make sure that their net run rate was better because they got 139 rather than 134. So, I mean, he has to just be complimented. He could have done nothing more. He needed a bit of assistance from the guys around him to try and win it a little bit earlier. But even then, it was going to be pie in the sky and, and hope of, above all hopes. But, but I think Chenna have, I think they've got their work cut out. And what have they lost three in a row now? Um, and, you know, everyone's not firing on cylinders. Um, they're a big match team. We can't get away from that. They've done it before. There's a lot of players who there have been in successful campaigns. So they'll draw on that strength and all those memories. Um, and they won't be panicking. But they'll need more of the individual players to stand up and be counted. You can't win a knockout competition of the back end of a tournament with only three or four guys firing. You have to get your figures up to seven, eight, maybe even nine players playing at their best if you ought, ought to go all the way. So they've got a lot of thinking to do. But the moral of the story is they're there. They've got the opportunity. And uh, they'll have two cracks at it. Uh, it'll be interesting if they were to use the second crack, Joy, because Delhi flying high just on the assumption that Delhi were to win that game and go straight to the final. Chennai will be then coming off four losses in a row, going to Sharjah, playing a team who have just come off a win. So, whoever wins between third and fourth place, it could be Bangalore, it could be Kolkata, we're now assuming that that's the way it'll be, will be a winning team coming to Sharjah or staying in Sharjah in, in that case and welcoming Chennai from a different ground. So, all the odds will be against the team that loses that first and second. Yeah, I mean, that actually makes it even better for Kolkata because, you know, again, if you look at the Bangalore team, they're not the team. Sharjah is not their natural surface for the kind of team that they play and the way they play the game. It's not their natural surface. Of course, enough is said about this surface. We thought the spinners would dominate this surface and the fast bowlers did. So it's difficult to call. But if you look at that team, uh, their batting or, you know, Maxwell, De Villiers, all of them like the ball coming on. They prefer the ball coming on. And I think they're a powerful batting unit and a decent bowling side. I think Kolkata is just around the other way around. They're a powerful bowling unit at this point in time. 
and a decent batting side sign thanks to the youngster so i think uh, it's a match up set up to you know it it works better for kolkata at this point in time at least i mean you can't say anything about the game but it works better for kolkata where is rcb's last game uh, they are playing in... in dubai against delhi okay so it's dubai so let's in fact since you've mentioned that uh, hmm. and we're looking ahead let's go straight to answer Sean's question and talk about that game. We've briefly seen the uh, the squad for Bangalore. Let's remind you where the match is. It's the last match in the league stage, but technically, it's the joint last match because for the first time ever in the history of this tournament, we're going to have two matches played concurrently, just like you do in football when you're at the end of a league stage and you're trying to play the two matches so nobody will be influenced by the other result. As it's turned out, it's kind of two deadish rubbers that will determine that. But still, we're going to play two matches simultaneously, Joy. Uh, the second of them, doesn't matter which way you take it, is going to be Bang uh, Hyderabad against Mumbai. That's match number 55, only because that's the way it was when things started out. But let's go back to the Bangalore game. You've briefly talked about uh, that particular game. Let's go back to the squad and try and assess how they will approach this game. They know they've qualified. They pretty much know that getting to one and two now is going to be a pretty uphill task. How do they approach this game looking ahead to that Sharjah game? Yeah, I think you've got to go with the squad that's going to play in Sharjah. For me, Hasaranga, uh, you know, Garten, he's had a go of things. I'm not overly convinced. I, I'm not seeing a match winner there. Hasaranga, I think he's been in such good touch. Um, yeah, I, I personally would go that route. Uh, you know, I would definitely think of of trying to get him included. And Dan Christian, I don't know. I mean, from a bowling perspective, mm, you know, I would almost be tempted to go back to Carl Jamison. I think what Jamison does with his massive height, you know, hitting straight back of a length at Charger, the ball staying down, I think that'll be more challenging to try and deal with than, than Dan Christian. And Christian, I mean, I, I saw a stat about his performance with the bat. It's, uh, it's only just been a couple of balls and it's been single figures at best. So um, I don't think there's a massive round of confidence there. And if you want them to play in the big match, you have to get them a game before. So I would say that those would be the two changes for me. Yeah, four balls is all he's played, Dan Christian, for all the build-up. Yes, he had that two-wicket spell. But the fact is, as Sean said, uh, after seeing the, what Lockie Ferguson did here, Countryman brings height, brings space, Kyle Jameson and Hasaranga compensates for the extra batting if you do want it, assuming you're taking out Garten and taking out Dan Christian to bring in these two, Joy. I mean, I completely agree with Sean. I mean... There's no question at all to not play Hasaranga when you have the talent of the quality of Hasaranga sitting in your reserves. You're going to play on a ground like Sharjah to not play him seems, I mean, I would definitely play him, especially given the fact that you're going to play after this in Sharjah because you're going to end up in third, fourth place. I, I see the very little chance for Bangalore to end up in first or second. They also have to do some very improbable mathematics to end up there. So my point is that if you're sure that your next game is Sharjah, you have to play Hasaranga tomorrow and get him ready for Sharjah. And, uh, you know, Dan Christian simply hasn't done enough. And again, I believe that Dan Christian going there, they had a sort of batting lineup is that decided, saying that, okay, Virat and Devdat will open. And then you have uh, Shrikar Bharat at three. Bharat, 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 Bharat at three, Maxwell, De Villiers, Shahbaz Ahmed. You've got something going. Now you've just messed it up a bit and it hasn't worked for you. Go back to what the stability you had and get Bharat back at number three. And let's see where you go from there. Because Dan Christian, the move to move Dan Christian up hasn't worked for you. Let's face it. I Just also think De Villiers, De Villiers needs to get more time. Uh, you know, I mean, I know, he didn't, I know he didn't get them over the line last night. But, I mean, he'll be pretty disappointed because 12 of 3 and he, he crashes a 6. He, he would have almost expected to hit a boundary in the next two deliveries. So, he'll be a little bit disappointed. But... I just think it's too much to ask of the individual just to come in with those a few months of deliveries. Uh, give him a little bit more time. Um, you know, him and Max were batting together probably from eight or ten overs on, you know, is, is more ideal than, than them messing around with the top order and then making them come in late. Yep, that was my final question. Sean Pollock's answered it. So I think with those two possible international changes and maybe a little tweak in the batting order, which they could possibly experiment with in match number 56, we shall see what Bangalore's plans are. As far as the opposition is concerned, well, 
uh, again, we've talked a lot about uh, Delhi and how they're nice and settled, but you don't want to break that winning habit. You don't want to break a winning combination yet. Perhaps do you see any rest for anyone? Sean, I'm going to come to you first because the big question is Kakiso Rabada, Anrich Nokia. Rest either of them? You might do. You might do just in case you give another person a game. I think the big thing is Marcus Stoinis. Where is he at? Uh, I think that's the balance that they want. That's the hitting power that they want to, to come in at number six. So if he's capable of um, getting out and showing that he's fit enough for the rest of the tournament, then I think that's the opportunity to, to get him in. Otherwise, besides that, I, I wouldn't... Uh, I mean, it's all up to... If they're niggles, rest him. Uh, if they aren't niggles, maybe keep them going. It's only four overs. The continuity, um, the, the run out on that ground but before the big knockout tournament of part of the tournament happens, I think that's vitally important. And everyone knows their roles. You know, you just keep the roles. If there's some with a niggle, try and get them to fill that role for them. But otherwise, just join us. Can he be fit? Because I think he is a big part for them. Well, uh, if uh, Nicholas Puran became poor run, then uh, Shimron Hetmeyer became Shimron Hitmeyer, Joy. And finally, for mm. Delhi, they'd be satisfied with the man with the blue hair now, not golden anymore has been delivering for them. They dropped Steve Smith last time around, brought in Ripple Patel. They've got a overseas slot available. Sam Billings, a possibility for you? No, not really. I mean, not for any other reason, but because this, this unit is going well. And unless they want to rest somebody or want to save somebody of Nichols, I, I don't think they want to change anything. They're on a good wicket. They know what they're doing. Everyone knows their role. I mean, I was surprised when Ripple Patel walked in ahead of Lalit Yadav. But clearly, there's somebody that they have faith in and they want to play. So let's see where it goes. I, I'm I'm surprised because let the other by chance if they miss out on you know qualifying from Dubai and they need to play that you know my, this thing in Sharjah, play a next match in Sharjah, then you know he might be useful for another spinner to you know come in and bowl a couple of overs. But you know uh, stranger things have been known to happen. This is a really solid unit and so far still looking like the best unit in the tournament. So let's. I wouldn't mess too much with it. Well, they certainly have. The other bright spark will finish off our preview to that game with him, uh, Sean, is Aksar Patel. Uh, certainly pushing for a spot in, uh, and has been for a while, in that uh, Indian team. But for now, he'll be focusing on just Delhi, this game, and then the playoffs. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's one of our picks. Uh, he just delivers, doesn't he? Yeah, with the bat, with the ball... In the field, um, he's he's really coming to his own. I think he's he's just unlucky that there's a guy called Ravinder Jadeja um, floating around and he doesn't get as much exposure at the international level at this format as he could. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure he'll be playing his part once again and, and would be a, a massive part in the rest of the tournament. Yes, that's as far as Bangalore uh, is concerned. They're playing against Delhi. That will be played parallelly with the other game that we're seeing, a final throw of the dice for the stadium in Abu Dhabi. We won't see it anymore until, of course, the T20 World Cup that uh, gets underway in a few days. Match number 55, it should have been, it should have been, had Kolkata not done what they did today, a big do or die for Mumbai. Go and win that and go and win that slightly well and you could qualify. Now, Joy, absolute impossible, um, near impossibility, shall we say. should never call it an absolute impossible. A near impossibility. I would actually like to see one of the things that I'd like to see, which I've been saying for a long time, is Anukul Ray has fielded so much for Mumbai over the last year because he's a you know gun fielder. I'd love to see him play a game. You know, I'd really love to see him play a game. Uh, other than that, look, there's nothing else very much you can do with this team. This is the strongest unit. I don't think their unit they have any problem with the players that they're putting out in the field. They've just been out of form and then they just haven't delivered. And I don't think there's anyone sitting outside who they're just saying, you know, the cock might come in and, you know, those small changes might happen. But I don't see anyone else. I don't see a Chris Lynn or an Adam Mill or anyone else walking into the 11 at this point in time. The one, I mean, I, mean, I was I was going to throw out names like Rush Kalaria and Amol and Molpreet Singh and Yudhvi Singh and just get anyone in. But the real person we should be talking about, uh, Sean, is Rahul Chahar. Remember at the start of the tournament, we said or start of this half, he was nudging Yuzvendra Chahal for that one spot. He currently holds that India team spot. So for him to mm. get out there and say, listen, I'm still okay on October 10th might be important, Sean. 
Yeah, maybe in place of Jand, um, you know, that might be the decision they go. I think he was, Jand was included because of the left-handers uh, being in the opposition lineup. So they were going to maybe use him in those first six. So it might be the opportunity, bigger ground, Abu Dhabi. Uh, it's, they prefer to go the leg spinning option. So that could be him back in, into the mix. I, I wouldn't be surprised by that at all. Yeah. And but look, with Mumbai, you never know. I, I really think they, they can go two ways. I've seen Mumbai making five changes because it doesn't matter anymore. And I've seen Mumbai making no changes saying it's about the fans. So it's, it's I mean, I... I it's how they see perceive this game. It's a very difficult one to call because Mumbai is a very proud franchise, you know, five championships. So I don't know whether they'll, you know, say that, okay, let's give everyone a chance. They could very well say, let's win with our best team possible. Let's win by 50 and show them we are Mumbai. We are, you know, five time champions. So very difficult to call them. Sean, you know all about the pride in that franchise. Uh, what do you think they're going to go? No, they'll have to accept the fact that it's a mathematical near impossibility. Are they going to go with the same unit and say, let's do this for our fans? Or are they going to give a few youngsters a chance? Yeah, I'd, I'd be surprised if they just gave opportunities. Um, I don't think that's the way they've been over the years. Uh, I think they'll be thoroughly disappointed. Um, I, mean, I know a couple of the guys on social media have sent out tweets with crying faces. Um, and it is a case in point because honesty, honesty, up until two hours ago, they would have still had that belief that they could go in and win the tournament and that they could get the job done tomorrow. I think they've got the hitting ability. You could just see them trying to set up a game where they have to chase something down and your Pandya and Pollard get into the crease sooner rather than later, led with a, a smashing attack at the top. Um, and they will be very disappointed. Uh, you know, it'll be a bit of a re regroup. They'll probably wake up in the morning and make the decision and have a rethink about what they do or don't want to do. Um, but disappointed. I mean, they're a quality squad. To have those names and, and those players and, and not get into the knockouts, uh, having been champions last year, will definitely be hurting them. So probably along the lines of wanting to finish on a high, even if they they don't win by the 180 runs and, and get themselves through. Yeah, it's it's one of those things. It's it's a kind of franchise, you know, because because you respect them so much, because... They've been doing so well. They're the team you love to hate. We talked about it once before. And, and Joy, one person finds himself in two franchises in the world that people love to hate. One is Mumbai. The other is Trinidad. And poor Kyron Pollard. <laughs> he, actually, he actually said it at a post-match presentation when they lost, when they were eliminated from the tournament. He says a lot of people around the world are going to be happy. Polly says it like he's... Uh, the other Polly says it like he sees it. <laughs> so does ours. So does he. So does Sean. Uh, absolutely. But yeah, it's just one of those things. Let's look at the opposition. Let's look at um, Hyderabad. And uh, the interesting fact is, other than uh, Basil Thumpy and Srivats Goswami, everyone over the course, I think, of the two, the entire tournament, everyone in this uh, squad has got to go, Joy. So come on, you've got to give them a chance. Yeah, I think, I think now they have. I think the only thing I see is that with every match, Umran Malik's... Uh, Auction price is increasing by 50 lakhs to a crore every time he plays. So every time you know he gets one performance in, they say, wow, he's something. He's getting another one in. I think he's the guy who's just going forward. Uh, interesting. I actually do expect them to give others a chance yeah. because I think Sunrises are in a very different place from where uh, Mumbai are at this point in time. I expect a few more chances. I wouldn't be surprised to even see Mujib play. I think he's a quality player. I'd love to see him on the field. I'd love to see them. And Given that Tom Moody and Trevor Bayliss are the kind of guys who like to give people a chance if there's opportunity, I think there is opportunity now. They'll do it now. Yes, so that is as far as the two games are concerned. And uh, we, of course, have one very important order of business. And that is our joy factor question. So, just we were in a, in a tearing hurry at the end of the show when we actually brought uh, this to you. So, Joy, I'm going to... Uh, Take us through the question and then the answer. Yeah, absolutely. So, in which specific list of limited over records are Pakistani cricketers in the top three spots and Ravindra Jadeja in ninth place is the highest ranked Indian? And the answer is this is the number of runs scored in one day international cricket without scoring a century. So, Mizbah tops the list. Wasti Makram is second. And I think it's Shahid Afridi is third. No, it's not Afridi. Afridi got a century. There's a third Pakistani and Ravindra Jadeja is ninth. 
uh, it's a fascinating list. You know, people who have got there without scoring a century, and I'm sure there are quite a few correct answers because this is the kind of thing that we lapped up. Yes, I think Mohin Khan is the third. Sean, did you have any idea of this one? Because you started having a very good track record of uh, answering Joy's questions at one point in time. <laughs> I didn't. Um, I must admit, I mean, I would have maybe been on that list if it wasn't for the fact that I managed to squeak 100 at one stage. <laughs> yes. But, um, yeah, no, I didn't. I, I must admit, I was thinking more along the lines of uh, spinning all rounders, uh, maybe who've got a certain amount of runs and wickets and but today before... they were to hit up. Before we go to our winner, Sean, very quickly, was that one of the three games that you played as a pure batsman where you got the 100? Yes. In the Afro-Asia Cup? That's it. Those are the three games that I played. It was the Afro-Asia Cup in Bangalore and two games in China. Correct. You got 100 in one of them, 58 or 43 in the next one and 35 not out in the third as a pure batsman. I remember <laughs> it because I not only was there covering it from start to finish. But I interviewed Sean at the end of that uh, 100 okay. and uh, he said, what's the fuss about? I've been a batsman all along. <laughs> <laughs> but brilliant. I was planning to search it out and I didn't know that Gotham had actually done all those three matches. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yep. There we go. So that's uh, Sean Pollock who, thanks to that innings, doesn't get on this list. But some people did get onto it and we have a winner who identified the list. And the winner is... Never mind. Uh, TC, you I'm got good. it. No, no offense. No offense. Tonmoy by now knows that if we if we sort of sigh when we hear his name, we don't mean it in a derogatory way. We just mean it as, well, there you go again. You've won another one. Good spot, Tonmoy. Well done. Clap, clap. And uh, well done for spotting that one. It's been a long double header. We've uh, fortunately finished well before midnight local time here, uh, which we don't always tend to do. But uh, looking forward to a final doubleheader, both reminding you, both on the, at the same time, uh, 7.30 local time, India time. And we'll be there at 6.50 looking at both games. And uh, we'll bring you that. Uh, we'll give you more details. Keep an eye on the site. We'll bring you the details exactly as to how we're going to cover that in tandem. Thank you, Sean Pollock. Thank you, Joy Bharacharya. Thank you all for tuning in. As always, just a final reminder, Crick Buzz Plus, that's the place to subscribe if you like what we bring you, but you still want a little bit more. That's all from this uh, weekday doubleheader. We'll see you soon. This is Crick Buzz Live in association with our fantasy partner, My 11 Circle.